yes, there's snow, but hardly any. Gosh, what a battering it's had. Helen's an absolute legend uh, across skiing circles, um, but what makes her a legend is not just her enthusiasm, the fact she's out in all conditions, but the fact she, uh, she heads for snow patches um, to keep the skiing record alive. I always remember when I was a kid um, going skiing with mum and dad and um, when we were approaching the ski area my mum would be like oh you could get your boots on now you know um, so that when we got there we were like like she was always out the car ready to go like super quickly ready to get up the hill and then um, yeah we were always like trying to get our boots and stuff on she was just like champing at the bit can't wait to get skiing. I had first thought of trying to ski for a whole year in the autumn of 2006 and I started in the October and this was me on Kismera in the August. Over the back of Cairn Gorm at the end of the season it's absolutely beautiful over there but like once the patches get smaller and smaller there becomes a point where it's kind of like well um, but yeah she just goes up and finds her patch and does her turns and yeah she's amazing. I feel quite confident and safe on Cairngorm because I know it so well, even if it's misty, uh, going up alone doesn't bother me at all. Because you're not relying on anyone else, you make the decisions. I'm not persuaded or coerced into going somewhere that I'm not happy, but it also means I'm not holding up anyone. A lot of folk have said, you know, you spend the whole day by yourself up there, are you not lonely? No. Uh, it's totally, you're totally absorbed. You're thinking about the snow, the weather, you're enjoying the wildlife, the scenery. Every sort of sense in your body is almost overloaded. If you have any worries or any problems, they're just totally blocked. My saying has always been problems begin beneath the snow line and that's one of the reasons I do this because you kind of forget about everything when you're up there. But it was that October that I was diagnosed with esophageal cancer. But unfortunately, hospital appointments meant I couldn't go up. So I didn't manage to do the 12 months that year because of the cancer diagnosis. I'm Ian Cameron, and I monitor long-lasting snow patches on the hills of Scotland. We're now in mid-August and there are the last three patches of snow in the whole of the Cairn Gorms. And they don't melt very often, at least they never used to. The patch in the middle Sphinx, which is the highest one, that has disappeared only a handful of times in the last few hundred years. But what is really noticeable is that the rate of disappearance over the last 10 to 15 years has really accelerated a lot. So here we are at the back of the Sphinx snow patch and Still a really good depth actually, considering it is getting on for late August. That gives it a good chance of surviving through to the following snows of, of next winter. The Sphinx patch, and it has shrunk quite a bit since we are last here in August. It's starting to look really quite vulnerable. Uh, it could be in line for disappearance again. It's, if it does happen, that'll be three years in a row, which is absolutely unheard of, so we're into uncharted waters. This is Scotland's most permanent patch of snow. I was incredibly lucky because the initial treatment was chemotherapy, which meant a week in hospital wired up to a drip, and then two weeks out. And it snowed each week I was in hospital, so the two weeks I was out, I was able to go and ski tour in the November uh, of that year. After major surgery in the January, I wasn't able to ski and I wasn't really able to carry my skis um, that year. I just went up for the first day of the ski season in 2009 in November. And that was the amazing winter. So I skied all through the winter and then I remember going up in July and going up in August and going up in September and I suddenly thought, gosh, that's 11 months. And then there was snow at the start of October and that was the, the 12 months and it happened. Never, never thought it would. 
And then since then, it's just been a case of trying to keep it going. This was September 14 at Case Merritt. Again, look at the size of the patch. Pretty big. When I arrived, there was a herd of reindeer on it. Went onto the patch and they moved over to the side. And all the time I was skiing, they just lay there and watched me. And it was absolutely lovely. I had to do a slalom on the patch around the reindeer poo that they'd left on it. But that didn't matter. It was a really special. So that was uh, September 14. This is my special reindeer. This is Eric. After I'd been diagnosed with cancer, he came with me on all my trips to hospital. And he's a bit like me because he's, he's got a wonky leg and he's not perfect, but that's my, my little Eric reindeer. This is the smallest ever patch I have skied. It was the only patch left in the Cairngorms. And it was really hard to find. I'd never been there before. And I'd almost given up and then suddenly I looked up and saw this little patch. I did it lots of times. So I had quite a bit of skiing that day, trying to perfect the single turn. It's the 7th of September. We've just come up the Nevis Range gondola. And our mission today is to try and get month. 119 it will be uh, on this little patch of snow that hopefully will still be there below Anach Beg. Walking along the plateau is one of the, the best places to walk in Britain. You just feel on top of the world and you're looking across to Ben Nevis, just stunning. But then you come to this call, but to get down it's quite steep and it's scree. So pretty icy this year, Helen, and uh, the snow patch about a third smaller than it was at this stage last year, so I don't think it's going to last. Um, but at least I'm doing some carbon neutral piste production. None of your piste machines up here. I should have brought my own skis. Well, there's only one person brave enough to ski every month of the year, and that's Helen Rennie. feel like a sense of relief having come down this slope and uh, also having managed to turn. If I was uh, younger I'd have put some more turns in but I've got that slope to get back up and I'm a bit apprehensive, don't want to do anything so it's been, I'm chuffed. <laughs> That's the taste of something chilly as we start October with sub-zero temperatures on the higher mountains in Scotland at least with some snow and some hail showers in the mix although don't expect too much from those. So, 10 years skiing down the mountain. Yeah, never thought all those years ago that it would happen and to be honest wasn't sure it was going to happen. 21st of October and an absolutely stunning day on Cairn Gorm with an almost decent amount of snow. I feel I've done justice to month 120 now. When I came up at the start of the month on the 2nd with Yvonne, it was a special day, but uh, the snow wasn't good. It was very soggy and it was misty. You just live each day at a time. So the fact that I've actually been able to do it has just been totally amazing. And if it hadn't been for the amazing GPs and surgeons, it wouldn't have happened. So I'm just incredibly lucky and grateful. <laughs>